Okay, good afternoon. If I may, I'd like us to get going. Um, we have a, what well, hopefully will be a very interesting afternoon, a very engaging afternoon for everybody. And first of all, I'd like to welcome you here to this year's uh, stakeholder event. Um, this is a really important event in our calendar. Uh, it's an opportunity for us at the Carbon Trust to share some of our thinking uh, with our stakeholders to get your input into what we should be doing more or less of, what are the things that worry you, what are the things that impress you or otherwise uh, about our operations so far. And, and so it really is important for us. It's an opportunity for us to listen, and we'll be doing an awful lot of listening. Uh, on that, I'd just like to make a couple of points. Firstly, we will ask you at the end of uh, the event just to fill in a quick form that's on your uh, seats, uh, giving some assessment of the afternoon and how valuable you might have found it or otherwise. Um, but actually, we're here in, in, in listening mode in, in a number of ways. Firstly, we're going to have um, a Q&A. We're going to have an open Q&A when Michael Ray, our CEO, and I will hopefully take as many questions as we can um, before we lead into a debate. After the debate, there'll be a second opportunity, as it were, to put questions to anybody from the Carbon Trust team uh, over some refreshments downstairs. And please take advantage of the opportunity to pigeonhole us. Uh, our job is to be there and hopefully answer and engage with as many of you as we possibly can in the time available to us. But I also recognize, because the one thing I hate doing in life, and if I don't mind talking uh, to a group like this, but I hate putting my hand up and asking a question. Uh, I always think I'm going to be the one asking the daft question. Um, so what we are going to do is email everybody out, uh, basically with details of how you can respond to us by email, just with your thoughts, your questions, uh, comments and remarks. And uh, if you can come back to us within a week, then Michael and I will undertake that we will read every one of your responses to us in the week following that. So we will read everything that you send to us within a week of us having received it. I think that is as, as much of a commitment at this moment as we can make. So three different ways in which we're going to be very much here today in listening mode. We think that now is a key moment uh, for low carbon. Um, we've had a decade uh, in which climate change awareness has gradually grown. The science underpinning climate change as a reality and one that we are responsible for has grown to the point where I think it is now widely accepted. Um, carbon has become a mainstream term. Carbon footprint is in the vernacular. It's very much there. We all understand that it's there. Um, and yet, uh, we have to reflect on Copenhagen uh, before Christmas as a bit of a reality check. Um, Copenhagen didn't meet the quite extraordinary expectations made of it. Um, and as a reality, we will probably need to just reset uh, our compass in terms of where we think uh, reality may be going forward uh, and where the challenges might be. Certainly from a business investment point of view, it's going to be challenging, and there probably has been a loss of momentum. Look at the carbon price. It has gone down. So Copenhagen has had a negative impact. Our job is to get back on track quickly, and I don't think that's going to be uh, necessarily a long-term effect, but it's certainly one that we feel right now. Notwithstanding Copenhagen, we recognize that uh, the context in which the Carbon Trust operates is changing, and it's changing quite significantly and quite quickly. Uh, firstly, we had the economic downturn. Uh, the economic downturn smacked most of our customers uh, in the face in one way, shape, or form, and has caused them to reevaluate a little bit their response to climate change. Uh, it's still very positive, but I have to say we are seeing more organizations now looking for cost saving through energy efficiency, looking for low-cost measures by which they can build reputational benefit, and maybe taking a little bit of a less strategic view in terms of positioning their organization to respond to climate change and take advantage of the long-term opportunities that big capital investment will bring. So it has reset a little bit uh, the business expectation. It's also reset, of course, government's expectations of what's going to be going on. And the stimulus funding that has come through in response to the economic downturn has been very significant. But having seen a very significant uh, stimulus coming through, we now recognize that the state of public finances are likely to be constrained for the foreseeable future. And the government is under very real pressure to reduce public expenditure. So two very significant changes in context. Um, the second point I'd like to make is that the UK government has now got a legislative framework that enshrines long-term deep carbon emissions in law. Uh, that is a measure that we very much welcome at the Carbon Trust for a whole number of reasons. First and foremost, the fact that those are long-term targets means that short-term carbon savings and longer-term carbon savings are all very important. And there's always been this slight doubt that you know, if you're in the innovation space, is that ever going to be as important as what you can do right now, or vice versa? 
actually we think that having long-term sustained carbon targets is going to be very important in setting an appropriate agenda where we focus not only on what we can do today, but on what we are going to need to do in the future and making sure that we have the technologies scalable and at a cost that allow us to develop them in time. So I think that's very important. 2010, it's a big year. It's a year in which we're going to see uh, a general election. Now, all three main parties are outwardly supportive of climate change mitigation, and I believe that that support is genuine. But we also have to recognize that in a situation where public finances are going to be severely constrained, then we're going to have to see uh, the response, the practical response of a new government to climate change as a, as a challenge, not only in terms, I believe, of its environmental impact, but also in terms of the broader impact, security of supply, uh, affordability, frankly, of energy going forward are likely to come forward and, and be more important to us going forward as well. So an awful lot is changing in terms of context, both for our customers and for government uh, and for stakeholders at large uh, as we go forward into this new decade. Um, the Carbon Trust mission uh, underpins everything that we do and is still totally relevant and absolutely essential. Quite simply, it is to accelerate the move to a low carbon economy, and I put the emphasis on accelerate. Our job is to do uh, all that is necessary to make things happen more quickly, more deeply than would otherwise be the case, to accelerate the progress that we are making. Now, moving to a low carbon economy is a huge business opportunity, uh, and that is very important for us, because it does give us the grounds for making a positive business case to invest in a low carbon future. It also means that because it is a business opportunity, we believe that everything the Carbon Trust does essentially is a net investment for the UK. And that's very important. Uh, and we need to keep reminding ourselves that the benefits that we derive are broad and we need to understand them and we need to measure them. We're also, though, just part of uh, quite a complex landscape here in the UK set by policy, by regulation, uh, by incentives, um, by consumer response. And we need to recognize that you know, we can't do everything, uh, but what we do needs to be really effective and needs to be really well targeted. Um, as an organization, we therefore need to focus the allocation of the resource that we have at our disposal to really have the greatest impact in terms of our mission, recognizing what other people are doing in other areas. And that's really important. We have resource that isn't just financial resource. We also have people. We have some great people within the Carbon Trust organization. And I have to say, I personally am indebted to them for their commitment to the cause that we support. It's been absolutely fabulous working with them over the years. But we also have our brand, frankly, and the influence that our brand confers on everything that we do as an organization. That's very important to us. So if our task in terms of business planning, and essentially this stakeholder event is uh, at a midpoint in our business planning cycle. We've had a first draft. We have some ideas and thoughts in terms of our business plan. Now we want to go out and test those thoughts uh, with our stakeholders. Then what is our core task? Well, it's to allocate those resources, but recognizing that there are some trade-offs that we need to be sensitive to and we need to balance. Those trade-offs have been with us for some time, but they're very real. You know, what is the balance of effort we should put between achieving short-term and longer-term carbon savings? What is the balance of effort that we should put between you know, really driving for cost-effective carbon with very large organizations that have a huge carbon prize versus the support that we can maybe uniquely offer SMEs who would otherwise not be able to pick up the challenge uh, very effectively? And what is the balance between direct carbon savings that we can measure and the indirect carbon savings that we might achieve through market transformation? I mean, all of these are very real challenges that we face, and we seek to balance our resource and allocation resource to get the greatest impact, but whilst balancing and recognizing those challenges to us. Um, our aim, quite simply, through this business plan is to respond positively and flexibly to the challenges that we face, to the changes that we face uh, in terms of context, and also the challenges that we face in meeting the needs of our customers. Um, uncertainty does constrain, to some degree, the ability we have to plan for change. And the most obvious thing is the level of public funding that we will enjoy going forward. Um, we don't know that, and we won't know that for some time. What is clear is that uh, it will be determined, to some degree, by the commitment to climate change mitigation of an incoming government, and by the uh, support that that incoming government sees for climate change mitigation through organizations such as us? Our, is our approach fundamentally one that resonates with an incoming government or not? Our case for public support has always been predicated on 
cost efficiency and on the effectiveness of our ability to deliver outcomes that are relevant. And I think that has been the basis of our case for public support in the past, and it will be very much the same going forward. Now, that effectiveness is driven very much by the public-private partnership that we have enjoyed for many years uh, with our customers, and indeed with public sector organisations that we think of as just businesses, because they are in all ways, shapes and forms businesses in their own right. And our ability to maintain that valued uh, partnership is predicated very much on our ability to be sensitive and responsive to real needs as they are expressed. We are forever changing the way the Carbon Trust responds to our customers because that is our job. It's to develop a customer offer and keep developing it and changing it to respond appropriately to changing needs. Now, that's going to be what we're going to be doing going forward. And Michael will talk a little bit more about some of our areas that we are pretty certain we're going to want to develop going forward because at the end of the day, our customers are changing, not just the context in which we operate. Um, in developing our plans going forward, we need to leverage our core capabilities, and they are uh, relevant, and they are as relevant today as they have been in the past, and possibly they'll be more relevant going forward. Um, our brand um, is enormously effective uh, in terms of conferring on us maybe the ability to convene people, to actually legitimize the advice and the information that we give, and that is not something we take for granted. Um, it's important to us. There are three key attributes. We research what people think of the Carbon Trust on a, an occasional basis, but it's a regular and occasional basis, and a pattern has really emerged, which is very interesting. There are three key attributes that people see in the Carbon Trust. Um, it's experience, it's independence, and the rigor of its approach. And time after time, those three stand out above anything else that we offer. And hopefully that legitimizes our position within uh, the low carbon context here in the UK. Um, expertise and simply experience of having done an awful lot in particular areas, um, of course, does give us uh, some understanding of the market and the technical risks that organizations face as they develop low carbon technologies and as they try to create low carbon enterprise. And that ability to assess technical and market risk is something that, again, is, is, is quite distinctive in the market and hopefully we leverage to good effect. Now, Looking forward, therefore, um, what is the key priority for the Carbon Trust? Quite simply, we want to position the UK to capture the full benefits of the transition to a low-carbon economy. And we believe that those benefits are very significant, and we believe we have a key role to play in the UK's positioning uh, in that regard. There are environmental benefits without question. Um, there are economic development benefits. There is no question that uh, building a low-carbon economy will support economic development in the UK very substantially. And at the end of the day, um, we need to be in tune with what is needed for those developments to come forward. I think there are two things that we need to do. We need to ensure that there is really mass engagement of organizations wanting to reduce carbon emissions and wanting to reduce carbon emissions in the immediate. And there are a number of ways in which we can make that happen through practical help that we can uh, provide organizations with, help that is relevant to their needs, through financial support that we can provide in a whole number of ways, and lastly, by establishing challenging but voluntary standards for action. And that is an area of our work that increasingly stakeholders have come back and said, we want you to do more of that going forward. So in, in the sort of the immediate agenda, mass engagement of organizations really wanting to uh, reduce carbon emissions because they see the business case for it and it's up to us to articulate that business case. And lastly, I think we have a key role to play in reducing the cost of the transition to a low carbon economy. The reality is that many of the measures that we are considering today and that we know are essential to a 2020 and 2030 and beyond time frame are predicated upon the deployment of technologies that are relatively expensive right now. You know, our focus in our innovation work is many other things, but fundamentally it's all about reducing the cost of low carbon technologies so that they become cost effective at scale and they become very real opportunities for the UK to benefit from. I think that's probably said all I need to say in uh, way of introduction. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Michael Ray, uh, our COO, who will outline really what we've achieved in the past and how we think that is going to translate into what our priorities should be going forward. We'll follow that up with a Q&A where the two of us will be happy to take questions uh, from the audience. And at that point, we'll then go in to this afternoon's debate. 
So thank you very much. I'm going to hand over to Michael. Thank you.